Hello, in this video we're going to look at production and cost in the short run when capital is fixed and labor is a variable input. Our goal is to complete this table. We have the number of workers that a firm can hire or use during a day and the output given from those workers. And then we have the average product to labor, marginal product to labor, and some various measures of cost. These dashes up here mean those things are undefined. All right, so we're going to complete the table. First thing I'll do is going to calculate average product to labor. So the average product here is just the output divided by the number of workers that produce that output. 10 divided by 1. 18 divided by 2. I'm not going to simplify these so you can just see where the better see where the calculations are coming from. When we have three workers, they produce a total of 25 units of output. So the average output per worker is 25 divided by 3. And finally, and 28 divided by 4 is the average product when we hire four workers. The marginal product is just a change in total product when we use one more worker. So when we go from 0 to 1, total product increases from 0 to 10, a 10-unit 10 increase. When we go from 1 to 2 workers, total output increases by 8, 10 to 18. When we go from 2 to 3 workers, total output increases by 7 units, the difference between 25 and 18. And then the marginal product of the fourth worker is going to be 3, the difference between 25 and 8. So that's marginal product. All right, uh, I have some information down here on the firm's cost. The firms pay workers $50 a day, so each worker gets paid $50 a day, and the firm has a fixed cost of $100 a day. So the first thing I'm going to do is fill in fixed cost. I'm just going to put in 100 So regardless of our output, the firm has a fixed cost of $100 per day. Now let's calculate the variable cost. So the variable cost is simply going to be the wage times the number of workers used. So when we're not using any workers, zero workers, zero times 50 is just zero. When we're using one worker, we have $50 of variable cost. Labor is our variable input. 2 times 50 is 100. 3 times 50 is 150. So is 3 workers and 25 units of output. Our total variable cost is $150. And finally, this last cell here, 4 times 50, gives us 200. Okay, the next thing we can calculate is total cost. Total cost is variable cost plus fixed cost, so 0 plus 100 means that total cost is 100 at 0 units of output. At 10 units of output, total cost is 50 plus 100, or 150. Then we get 100 plus 100, or 200. Then we get 250, and then we get 300. So this is how our total cost behaves at different levels of output. All right, let's move on to average cost. Average cost is total cost divided by output, so 150 divided by 10. Average cost at 18 units of output is 200 divided by 18. Average cost at 25 units of output is 250 divided by 25. And finally, at 28 units of output, our average cost is 300 divided by 28. Let's move on to average variable cost. Average variable cost, we're going to take the variable cost number and divide it by output. So 50 divided by 10. Then we're going to take 100 and divide that by 18. 100 divided by the output level of 18. And then we're going to take variable cost of 150 and divide that by 25. And then finally, we're going to take 200 and divided by 28. And then finally we have average fixed cost. Average fixed cost is fixed cost, $100, divided by output. So 100 divided by 10. 100 divided by 18. <clears throat> the fixed cost at 25 units of output is 100 divided by 25. 
And finally, the fixed cost at 28 units of output is 100 divided by 28. All right, one last thing to do. Let's calculate marginal cost in this example. So just taking some of the most important stuff from our last table, number of workers, the output associated with those workers, total cost and variable cost. So marginal cost is just going to be the uh, change in total cost divided by the change in output. So when we go from zero to 10 units of output, total cost changes by 50. So the change in total cost over this range of output is 50. The change in the output here is 10. So it's 50 divided by 10. So this is the marginal cost between 0 and 10 units of output. The marginal cost here between 10 and 18 units of output, once again, is the change in total cost. 150 to 200, that's a $50 change in total cost. And the change in output this time is just 8 the difference between 18 and 10. So over this range of output between 10 and 18 units, marginal cost is 50 divided by 8. And then the next uh, case here, when we go from 18 to 25 units of output, the change in total cost is 50, and the change in output is 7. And then the last one here, the change in total cost is 50, but this time the change in output is only 3, and that is our marginal cost column. Now another way we could calculate this marginal cost column, instead of looking at the increase in total cost or the change in total cost divided by the change in output, we could look at the change in variable cost divided by the change in output. So as we go from 0 to 50, that is a $50 increase in variable cost. The change in output is still 10. When we go from 50 to 100, the change in variable cost is still 50. Change in output is 8, and so on. All right, so that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.